90 minute lecture, the short version or the long three hour version. Oh, so you can tell us how long we're going to be Probably here. the shorter version. <laughs> no, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, what's normal? Um, what 30 to 45 minutes. 30 to 45 minutes, you hear that? spelling because that's how things are when I write on the board. <laughs> um, my father has a PhD from the University of Chicago 1947, 48, 49, and started out his career first as a postdoc at Caltech and then went to the University of California at Berkeley for 10 years. I followed that with 10 years at Purdue and then I believe eight years at Tel Aviv University. In between, there were sabbaticals in various places in Europe. Um, since then, he's taught at uh, Georgia Tech, Florida Atlantic University, and the, um, I forget the name of the institute, in uh, Boca Raton, Florida. He's resided in Ann Arbor as a distinguished visiting professor on and off since uh, 88, I think, somewhere in the late 80s. I think Carly will leave it to you to talk about numbers both finite and infinite. Okay. Thank you all for coming. Uh, although I can't see all of you. Maybe I'll get some little emotions to take a look. Two words, essentially the title of the talk, are a part of speech called adjectives. They modify other parts of speech, particularly they modify nouns. Now in this case, finite and infinite both modify a particular noun called the, the word set, S-E-T. You need the word set? A set is a well. A set is essentially undefined. You can only define it in terms of other words that they must sound like they have a similar meaning, like collection. Set. Yes, has the count of the set, the number of elements that are put parallel bars on each side. Parallel bars. Yeah. And equals the count of the set. The count of S. So this symbol is how you represent how many members are in the count of S. Numbers. How do you designate that cap open paren set? No, that's fine. out is that there's one answer for finite sets and a rather surprising answer for infinite sets. So for a finite set, the, the typical finite set is the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, up to m, little m. So, so right, tip, tip, typical s. equals the 
curly brackets, one comma, two comma, three dot 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 comma M. And then M is the count of S. Now, let's suppose this. out of my mouth. <laughs> you just said it, so I wrote it down. Now, the number M is the, in this particular set, it's the largest number and you're certainly accustomed to M equals five when the set consists of one, two, three, four, and five. Is it possible that a set M, that, that such a set is two different M's? So, so put here a Spanish S, a Spanish question mark. A Spanish question mark, which is an upside down question mark? Question mark. I wish you'd told me this ahead of time, I would have practiced it. But okay, well, that's awesome. how's that do? No. That's backwards? <laughs> It's not, a, no. it's not upside down. How's that? That's better. That's an upside down question mark. I apologize for my handwriting. Question mark. Now, size of S, bar, parallel bars S, equals count of. This way or this way? Uh, count of. Braces? Yeah. Braces, braces. Oh, square braces? You like no. those? That's brackets. Okay. Oh, your braces look like what I might call a parenthesis? Like the one up there. Parenthesis. Okay, good. No. Mm -hmm. I like the braces. The S squiggle braces. Here we go. <laughs> How's this one? That's it. <laughs> Can this be the count of one? Obviously, practiced this for some time before well, we got here today. <laughs> well, if, if this is the situation, I think everybody will agree that M equals M. That we're not introducing anything new. It can't be another number. It can't be that a set of of count seven also has count eleven. Impossible. So, so we have a pretty good feeling for what the count of a finite set is. The count of count of one, two up to n is equal to n. And the count of one, two up to m is equal to m. And if we're looking at the same, essentially the same set enumerated in two different ways, the m equals n. So we have a feeling for what counting a finite set is. Now let's come to our first example of an inference. Now, now be very careful. Capital N. Capital N is in Nancy. Equals curly braces. One, two, three, dot, dot, dot. Close the brace. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, etc., 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 on and on and on and on. This is our first example of an inference set. Now, if you take the take the finite set one to m you're not going to find a, a 
set 1, 2 up to n inside of it unless n equals m. So, first question is, what can we find inside of this set n? <coughs> this set has size infinity, so we can put the, for this n, we can write the size of n bars <coughs> equals infinity. That's an upside down a is the standard. I'll draw it sideways. Best you can do. Is it the best I can do? I don't know. It's my very first one today. Okay. I could try a few more, see if I can improve on it. Now, would, would it be possible that we find within the set N a different subset which has the same count? Well, let's try right down. I'm going to write, now write down two such sets. I'll start over here. <coughs> let's call it N sub 1. Okay, n sub 1 equals, in fact, instead of the 1, let's write I, mm. ODD. Tell me if you got it right. ODD. <laughs> Even's coming up, though. That's going to be a little harder. Maybe. Okay, see equals, now, now the braces. Just the odd numbers here? One, three, five. You don't have to go up into left field. One, three, five, seven. Even down here? Yeah, instead of the two. Even. Two, four, six, eight, etc. Now, the interesting thing is that these two sets have the same size. Count these two sets, it's, you got the same. And in fact, you can match up the elements of the odd set with the elements of the even set in such a way that ev everyone is matched up with one, everyone from one set is matched up with one from the other set. So let's put the matching down. You want me to draw lines or you want me to start something else? Start right? in the middle, matching. Okay. You want me to write the word matching? Write the word matching. This is our first foray into two syllable words, so it's <laughs> going to be a challenge, but I'll see how I can do it. Beautiful. Colon. Now put one and a, a double arrow. No, 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 no. An arrow with a pointed feet at both ends. the one. So this, this makes these sets 
look like they stay up the same size. Because every, every element in one of the sets matches to an element in the other set, and vice versa. These sets have, these sets, and, and odd and, and even, have the same size. Now we need a digression into something called the union of sets. And I wonder, could you switch the board? It's going to take a little drawing. It'll be a little diversion here in uh, blackboard maintenance. Try not to take out the TV while we're doing it. All right, uh, there's the table in the way. Let's come out a little further. Thank you, Dan. <laughs> Examples. The concept I want right at the very top is union. And it, it also equals, union. also called union. join. So equals join. Not equals AKA. equals sign. J O. Let's take, for example, S equals so for example, EX. Uh, S equals one now braces one, two, four. Five, seven, eight. Not that, or that's it? That's it. T equals two, four, six, seven, eight. Now the join of S and T. Here we need a symbol for join. It's it's just a big U. How do I make it not look like a U? No, not a Y. A U. Well, all right. Open it up. A cup. S join T equals. This is this is everything which is either in S or in T or in both. So no duplicates? No duplicates. It's a set, it's not a, okay. it's not a picture of one. So one is in both of them, two is in one of them. Uh, both, you put it in both, that's all right. Sorry, two, four. In both. Five. In just one of them, in S. Six. In T. Seven. In both. Eight. That's the so idea this, of join. This symbol is the symbol for a join? That's the symbol for the join. Okay. Now, what can you say about the size of the join? So that's... Like that? Well, make it the U a U, not the, no sharp corners. So in this case, what, what's it equal to? Well, we have one, two, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, 
one, two, four, five, six, seven, eight. I get seven. Does everybody get seven? That there's seven elements in the set, S joint. Do we want the size of S just for reference? Yeah, that's and the okay. size of T? Sure. I get the size of S is six, and so the size of T is anybody. All right, five. Okay, so that's an example of of this union or joint of two sets. Now let's go back to the first play. Alrighty. We have the odds and the evens. And the count of each of these is infinity. No question that, because they go on forever. Of course, I haven't said, said exactly what I mean by infinity yet. But we can say that whatever you mean by infinity, these sets should this odd set and the even set should both have the count or the size of infinity. It's not finite. So what's left? What isn't finite is infinite. But now let's write down the join of n odd and n even. Can I lose the matching or? Twist this a little so you can see. Right, I want can you I to put write it here or do you need this? Right under even, right? N odd. Join. Join. And even. It's everything that is either odd or even. So that's capital M. I'll say this more. Because N is one, two, three, it's everything. So here we have N odd, N even. N odd join N even, which becomes N again. So N splits into two parts, which as far as we can see have the same size, because we write down the size of N odd. No, no, no. no. Taken over. We're out of room. Okay. Here's the size of NI. All I did was move matching up here. Well, you want it down there? N and N odd have correspond to each other, one to one. N, let's write N. Two. 
Leonard. Comma. And to an even. So we've broken the, the set N up into two sets, which essentially, any way you, you want to say it, size of a set, these two sets are the same size. And they're joined, then must also have the same size. One, two, three, four. The joint is one, two, three, four. Is that written someplace? The joint of n odd and n even is yeah. equal to n. Is n. And n is defined as one, one comma two, two comma three odd, odd forever. So we didn't write it out, but it's represented here. You want to write it out? Equals? No. Okay. We have a situation where a set, N, is split into two sets, each of which apparently has the same size as N has, and which each have the same size as each other has. Now, this could not happen with finite sets. The set 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and the set one, two, three, four, five, seven. If you join them, you get one, two, three, four, five, seven. Which is different from one of them. So think about this a minute, because th this is a uh, sort of a, a different concept. You have the set one, two, three. It's broken up into two subsets which correspond to one another and correspond to n. So n is the join of two sets, which are any way you want to think of size, it's the join of two sets that are the same size as n is. So that's, that's something new. You don't. Uh, telling me that if I take all the numbers, one, two, three, and so on forever, I got as many of them as if I take just the evens and just the odds? Is that what you're That's saying? exactly right. Why? Wow. Just as many. It would seem like there would be half as many. Yes. Or that n would be twice as big as n. If I can but editorialize for a minute, this problem has bugged me because since I learned it at the age of eight. It doesn't <laughs> seem fair. Also mentioned that we've been talking for about half an hour. I have. Yes. All right. Uh, well, we're going to do one other thing. Where? We're going to look for a set on the on the back page, or, or maybe we'll just erase some of this. Can we work on this half, or is that too far for us? Uh, start erasing. Start erasing. We can't we'll erase the that. title. We won't know why we're here. So we'll leave that. <laughs> And we'll start erasing down. Well, is that enough room to get us started? Keep going. Keep going. Okay. So, I'd like an example of a set which is larger than the set n of integers. Remember the set n is 1, 2, 3, 4, etc., etc. I want a set which is larger. That means that if I start counting off the elements of the, of the set, I don't get all of them. And what we'll take for the, the set is the set of real numbers. These are the numbers that you, that you do business with. Literally. Can I write that? Yeah, that's fine. Used for business? No. But you, 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 you can't write them down a straight line. No. We've established that. It all curves up. Now, now I'm going to suppose that I, that I can write them down a straight line. 
all the real numbers and show that this is a contradiction it's impossible okay so we need to, to simplify the problem a little but not critically I'll just look at the numbers that are the real numbers that are greater than or equal to zero and less than one. So let's let's write uh, let's write an R in the middle or right there. Zero comma one sub sub zero comma one equals the set of brace X bar, big bar. Yeah. It's a set of X for which zero is less than or equal to X. Less than one. Now, when, when you have to write down a real number, what do you write down to? have a specific real number, what do you write down? You write down its decimal expansion, like pi equals 3.1415. Well, these numbers are let's write equals well, now what, what do I want to say? That, that these numbers between zero and one, have the decimal have a decimal expansion. Except I'm going to change shift ground a little and make it a decimal is base ten, but, but base ten has not, nothing t to do with nature, except that we have ten fingers. Chimpanzees have ten toes and so on. But so I'm going to write it in base two. So equals, put the equals under here. Yeah. The set of zero point decimal, decimal expansion point B1. B? B, little small b sub 1. B sub two, comma, or no. I see. B sub three, and dot dot dot. Uh, but that's uh, that's going a little too fast. Take away the brace and put uh, a bar, a up and down bar, meaning where. B sub j equals zero or one. You want to give some examples just in case some of us don't quite get that? <laughs> yeah. Put uh, zero point one one one. Let's say make, make that one zero one. Well, that could be another example. So this is zero point one. That's a half. It's a half when in the binary system. And then to, to that we don't add a quarter, but we add an eighth. So this is equal to, now put, okay, zero plus a half plus an eighth. Zero is equal to one half plus zero fourth plus one eighth. That's its decimal value. Zero fourth plus 
an eighth, an eighth is four-fourths, so it's five-fourths. Not five-fourths. Five-eighths? Five-eighths. Thank you. Sure. Do you want me to put that here? Yeah. And, and that's, that's expansion in decimal. 0 0.625. Is that what you wrote it? It is. Okay. I knew you'd need that, so I just tucked it in there. Yeah. So the real numbers, they can be written in decimal expansion. They can be written in base 17. They can be written in base anything you want. But I've chosen base 2 as a possibility. And I, I claim that now the I can now show that the real numbers cannot be enumerated. A first one, a second one, a third one, a fourth one that takes all of them. So let's pretend we can enumerate them. Excuse me just a second. Are you having trouble reading the red? Is that what I heard? Uh, yes. Yeah. I'll switch to black if that's okay with the professor. Absolutely. Okay. Okay, draw a line straight across. Wow. Well. That's a challenge, but I'll have a go at it. There's a line that goes across it. Yeah, be, be a little less generous with vertical space. We need it. Well. Okay, let, so let's suppose we have we have written down all the reels in a straight line. Is this our straight line? No. We're going, okay. X1. X1 X or R1? X1. Equals. 0 point. Now it has an expansion. And we'll call we'll call the numbers in the expansion x sub uh, one. one. Same one? No, second one. X sub one one. No, no. Zero point x sub one. Is that good or not? No, it's not good. All right. Zero point x sub right, which you just erased again. X sub one. X sub one. Now go to the next line. Ah. X two equals zero point x two. Now we want to finish these lines. So the first line should be x sub 1, 1. x sub 1, 1. No, no. All you have to do is write a little 1. Here? Yeah. Plus, no, I'm sorry. Now another x sub 1, 2. x sub 1, 3, etc., etc. And x2, the next number in our enumeration, is x21 plus x22 plus x23, etc. And now put dot, 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 after, line of dots after this. Down? No. Horizontal. Here? Yeah. Start under x2. A line of dots? Yeah. Okay. So this is x3 equals 0, x31, x32, x33, etc. 0, x4 equals 0, x41, x42. Put down x5 so we just see it. So we skip a few? Is that what you're saying? 0, x4, x31, x4, 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 That's the decimal expansion of x5. Where, and now put to the right of all of this stuff in there where x sub jk 
is equal to now an open brace zero or one. No, 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 no. Just a, a take away that zero. Oh. Put a big zero and a big one under it. Under it? Yeah. So we have all the real numbers in a straight line. And I want to show that this is impossible. And the, what I have to do is show that there is a number that is not equal to any of these. So I claim that this is all the real numbers. I want to show that there's another real number that's not equal to any of these real numbers. So erase all the red stuff. Um, if I could just ask another question, if you don't mind. Do you mind? Not at all. Um, in the past, we've been drawing our lines of numbers going across, but I'm assuming now that this is our list of all the reels going down. Yeah. So we've changed and shifted. And yeah. you're defining each of these reels by this thing which we believe. We believe. Yeah. Okay. So now I'm going to write down a number that's not equal to any of these. Okay. So write y equals 0. Point. Now, what I want is the opposite of x11. One, one. If x11 one, one is 0, I get 1. If x11 one, one is 1, I get 0. So you need now parenthesis. One minus x one one. No, not not up in heaven. Just one minus x one one. Close the parenthesis. Now the next one is. Next, no, next to this, 1 minus x, 1, 2. Go one further, 1 minus x of 1, 3. Close, dot, dot, dot. Each one of these is something you're doing to one of these terms? Yeah. The only thing that's a little wrong. So 1 minus x11, one, one, 0 point, emphasize that decimal point. 1 minus x11, one, one, and the next one should be 1 minus x22. Two, two. Oh, you're coming down the diagonal? Coming down the diagonal, exactly. 1 minus x33. Three, three. Etc. And that's a brand new one that's not on that and list. And this number other. cannot be in the list. Because if, for example, if, if x22 two, two is equal to 1, then 1 minus x22 two, two is 0. If x22 two, two is equal to 0, then 1 minus x22 two, two is 1. So you, you get something different. Y has a decimal expansion which is different from that of any of the x1, x2, x3, x4, etc. So we've shown that no matter how much we've enumerated all the real numbers, there's another real number, y, which is not in the list, which is different. So the real numbers must be larger than the set of natural numbers, because you can't enumerate them. By enumerate, may I ask here, I know this is obvious to you, and maybe it's obvious to everybody else, but I'm having trouble grasping what you mean by enumerate. What you're saying is I can count these, one, two, three, yeah. and so on, but no matter how many I count, you can find one that I've missed? Yes. Again, not fair, but okay, yes. I'll accept that. Yeah. <laughs> so. 
so the real numbers, they're more real numbers than their are counting numbers. One, two, four, five. They're more. And uh, this sounds like a mathematical proof, and it is with this a slight inaccuracy that I'll leave it for you to figure out. But there's there's one other point, namely that if you have a set of any size, right now. A set of any uh, size? Yeah, put a line, split this off. Let S, let S be any set. Just any set. Any set. Okay. Just the words, any set. The words, any set. set of all subsets of S set of all subsets of S is bigger So for example, if I start with the real numbers, which is bigger than the integers, we just got done with that, then I can make another set that's bigger than the set of real numbers. And then I can make a set that's bigger than that, and so on and so on and so on. So there ex exist infinite sets that with different counts of every possibility. I think we'll call it a day at that. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you for enhancing the presentation with black ink. <laughs> so, sorry, I didn't quite get This gentleman was having trouble reading the red ink. So we oh. thank you for switching to black. <laughs> oh, no problem. So there was that homework, that proof is due when? Uh, <laughs> at 218. <laughs> yeah. A new Toyota. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.